August 8. Deception by False Prophets Jeremiah, say to the people, This is what the Lord says. When people fall down, don't they get up again? When they discover they're on the wrong road, don't they turn back? Then why do these people stay on their self-destructive path? Why do the people of Jerusalem refuse to turn back? They cling tightly to their lies and will not turn around. I listen to their conversations and don't hear a word of truth. Is anyone sorry for doing wrong? Does anyone say, what a terrible thing I have done? No, all are running down the path of sin as swiftly as a horse galloping into battle. Even the stork that flies across the sky knows the time of her migration, as do the turtle dove, the swallow, and the crane. They all return at the proper time each year, but not my people. They do not know the Lord's laws. How can you say we are wise because we have the word of the Lord when your teachers have twisted it by writing lies? These wise teachers will fall into the trap of their own foolishness, for they have rejected the word of the Lord. Are they so wise after all? I will give their wives to others and their farms to strangers. From the least to the greatest, their lives are ruled by greed. Yes, even my prophets and priests are like that. They are all frauds. They offer superficial treatments for my people's mortal wound. They give assurances of peace when there is no peace. Are they ashamed of these disgusting actions? Not at all. They don't even know how to blush. Therefore, they will lie among the slaughtered. They will be brought down when I punish them, says the Lord. I will surely consume them. There will be no more harvests of figs and grapes. Their fruit trees will all die. Whatever I gave them will soon be gone. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then the people will say, Why should we wait here to die? Come, let's go to the fortified towns and die there. For the Lord our God has decreed our destruction and has given us a cup of poison to drink because we sinned against the Lord. We hoped for peace, but no peace came. We hoped for a time of healing, but found only terror. The snorting of the enemy's war horses can be heard all the way from the land of Dan in the north. The neighing of their stallions makes the whole land tremble. They are coming to devour the land and everything in it, cities and people alike. I will send these enemy troops among you like poisonous snakes you cannot charm. They will bite you and you will die. I, the Lord, have spoken. Jeremiah weeps for sinful Judah. My grief is beyond healing. My heart is broken. Listen to the weeping of my people. It can be heard all across the land. Has the Lord abandoned Jerusalem, the people ask? Is her king no longer there? Oh, why have they provoked my anger with their carved idols and their worthless foreign gods, says the Lord. The harvest is finished and the summer is gone, the people cry. Yet we are not saved. I hurt with the hurt of my people. I mourn and am overcome with grief. Is there no medicine in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? If only my head were a pool of water and my eyes a fountain of tears, I would weep day and night for all my people who have been slaughtered. Oh, that I could go away and forget my people and live in a traveler's shack in the desert, for they are all adulterers, a pack of treacherous liars. Judgment for disobedience. My people bend their tongues like bows to shoot out lies. They refuse to stand up for the truth. They only go from bad to worse. They do not know me, says the Lord. Beware of your neighbor. Don't even trust your brother, for brother takes advantage of brother and friend slanders friend. They all fool and defraud each other. No one tells the truth. With practiced tongues they tell lies. They wear themselves out with all their sinning. They pile lie upon lie and utterly refuse to acknowledge me, says the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord of heaven's army says. See, I will melt them down in a crucible and test them like metal. What else can I do with my people? For their tongues shoot lies like poisoned arrows. They speak friendly words to their neighbors while scheming in their heart to kill them. Should I not punish them for this, says the Lord? Should I not avenge myself against such a nation? I will weep for the mountains and wail for the wilderness pastures, for they are desolate and empty of life. The lowing of cattle is heard no more. The birds and wild animals have all fled. I will make Jerusalem into a heap of ruins, says the Lord. It will be a place haunted by jackals.
The towns of Judah will be ghost towns, with no one living in them. Who is wise enough to understand all this? Who has been instructed by the Lord and can explain it to others? Why has the land been so ruined that no one dares to travel through it? The Lord replies, This has happened because my people have abandoned my instructions. They have refused to obey what I said. Instead, they have stubbornly followed their own desires and worshipped the images of Baal, as their ancestors taught them. So now this is what the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, says, Look, I will feed them with bitterness and give them poison to drink. I will scatter them around the world in places they and their ancestors never heard of. And even there I will chase them with the sword until I have destroyed them completely. Weeping in Jerusalem. This is what the Lord of heaven's army says. Consider all this and call for the mourners. Send for the women who mourn at funerals. Quick, begin your weeping. Let the tears flow from your eyes. Hear the people of Jerusalem crying in despair. We are ruined. We are completely humiliated. We must leave our land because our homes have been torn down. Listen, you women, to the words of the Lord. Open your ears to what he has to say. Teach your daughters to wail. Teach one another how to lament. For death has crept in through our windows and has entered our mansions. It has killed off the flower of our youth. Children no longer play in the streets, and young men no longer gather in the squares. This is what the Lord says. Bodies will be scattered across the fields like clumps of manure, like bundles of grain after the harvest. No one will be left to bury them. This is what the Lord says. Don't let the wise boast in their wisdom or the powerful boast in their power or the rich boast in their riches. But those who wish to boast should boast in this alone, that they truly know me and understand that I am the Lord who demonstrates unfailing love and who brings justice and righteousness to the earth, and that I delight in these things. I, the Lord, have spoken. A time is coming, says the Lord, when I will punish all those who are circumcised in body, but not in spirit. The Egyptians, Edomites, Ammonites, Moabites, the people who live in the desert in remote places, and yes, even the people of Judah, and like all these pagan nations, the people of Israel also have uncircumcised hearts. Idolatry brings destruction. Hear the word that the Lord speaks to you, O Israel. This is what the Lord says. Do not act like the other nations who try to read their future in the stars. Do not be afraid of their predictions, even though other nations are terrified by them. Their ways are futile and foolish. They cut down a tree, and a craftsman carves an idol. They decorate it with gold and silver, and then fasten it securely with hammer and nails, so it won't fall over. Their gods are like helpless scarecrows in a cucumber field. They cannot speak, and they need to be carried because they cannot walk. Do not be afraid of such gods, for they can neither harm you nor do you any good. Lord, there is no one like you, for you are great, and your name is full of power. Who would not fear you, O King of nations? That title belongs to you alone." Among all the wise people of the earth and in all the kingdoms of the world, there is no one like you. People who worship idols are stupid and foolish. The things they worship are made of wood. They bring beaten sheets of silver from Tarshish and gold from Uppas, and they give these materials to skillful craftsmen who make their idols. Then they dress these gods in royal blue and purple robes made by expert tailors. But the Lord is the only true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. The whole earth trembles at His anger. The nations cannot stand up to His wrath. Say this to those who worship other gods. Your so-called gods, who did not make the heavens and earth, will vanish from the earth and from under the heavens. But God made the earth by His power, and He preserves it by His wisdom. With His own understanding, He stretched out the heavens. When He speaks in the thunder, the heavens roar with rain. He causes the clouds to rise over the earth. He sends the lightning with the rain and releases the wind from His storehouses. The whole human race is foolish and has no knowledge. The craftsmen are disgraced by the idols they make, for their carefully shaped works are a fraud. These idols have no breath 
breath or power. Idols are worthless. They are ridiculous lies. On the day of reckoning, they will all be destroyed. But the God of Israel is no idol. He is the creator of everything that exists, including Israel, his own special possession. The Lord of heaven's armies is his name. The coming destruction. Pack your bags and prepare to leave. The siege is about to begin. For this is what the Lord says. Suddenly I will fling out all you who live in this land. I will pour great troubles upon you, and at last you will feel my anger. My wound is severe, and my grief is great. My sickness is incurable, but I must bear it. My home is gone, and no one is left to help me rebuild it. My children have been taken away, and I will never see them again. The shepherds of my people have lost their senses. They no longer seek wisdom from the Lord. Therefore they fail completely, and their flocks are scattered. Listen, hear the terrifying roar of great armies as they roll down from the north. The towns of Judah will be destroyed and become a haunt for jackals. Jeremiah's Prayer I know, Lord, that our lives are not our own. We are not able to plan our own course. So correct me, Lord, but please be gentle. Do not correct me in anger, for I would die. Pour out your wrath on the nations that refuse to acknowledge you, on the peoples that do not call upon your name. For they have devoured your people Israel. They have devoured and consumed them, making the land a desolate wilderness. Judah's Broken Covenant The Lord gave another message to Jeremiah. He said, Remind the people of Judah and Jerusalem about the terms of my covenant with them. Say to them, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Cursed is anyone who does not obey the terms of my covenant. For I said to your ancestors when I brought them out of the iron-smelting furnace of Egypt, If you obey me and do whatever I command you, then you will be my people, and I will be your God. I said this so I could keep my promise to your ancestors to give you a land flowing with milk and honey, the land you live in today. Then I replied, Amen, Lord, may it be so. Then the Lord said, Broadcast this message in the streets of Jerusalem. Go from town to town throughout the land and say, Remember the ancient covenant and do everything it requires. For I solemnly warned your ancestors when I brought them out of Egypt, Obey me. I have repeated this warning over and over to this day, but your ancestors did not listen or even pay attention. Instead, they stubbornly followed their own evil desires. And because they refused to obey, I brought upon them all the curses described in this covenant. Again, the Lord spoke to me and said, I have discovered a conspiracy against me among the people of Judah and Jerusalem. They have returned to the sins of their forefathers. They have refused to listen to me and are worshiping other gods. Israel and Judah have both broken the covenant I made with their ancestors. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I am going to bring calamity upon them, and they will not escape. Though they beg for mercy, I will not listen to their cries. Then the people of Judah and Jerusalem will pray to their idols and burn incense before them, but the idols will not save them when disaster strikes. Look now, people of Judah, you have as many gods as you have towns. You have as many altars of shame, altars for burning incense to your god Baal, as there are streets in Jerusalem. Pray no more for these people, Jeremiah. Do not weep or pray for them, for I will not listen to them when they cry out to me in distress. What right do my beloved people have to come to my temple when they have done so many immoral things? Can their vows and sacrifices prevent their destruction? They actually rejoice in doing evil. I, the Lord, once called them a thriving olive tree, beautiful to see and full of good fruit. But now I have sent the fury of their enemies to burn them with fire, leaving them charred and broken. I, the Lord of heaven's armies, who planted this olive tree, have ordered it destroyed. For the people of Israel and Judah have done evil, arousing my anger by burning incense to Baal. A Plot Against Jeremiah Then the Lord told me about the plots my enemies were making against me. I was like a lamb being led to the slaughter. I had no idea that they were planning to kill me. Let's destroy this man and all his words, they said. Let's cut him down so his name will be forgotten forever. 
O Lord of heaven's armies, you make righteous judgments, and you examine the deepest thoughts and secrets. Let me see your vengeance against them, for I have committed my cause to you. This is what the Lord says about the men of Anathoth, who wanted me dead. They had said, We will kill you if you do not stop prophesying in the Lord's name. So this is what the Lord of heaven's armies says about them. I will punish them. Their young men will die in battle, and their boys and girls will starve to death. Not one of these plotters from Anathoth will survive, for I will bring disaster upon them when their time of punishment comes.